Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Saturday, December 12th, 2020. What a joy it is to be able to spend this time together with you in God's word today, as God uses his word to strengthen our faith in him and increase our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our savior. We begin today by reading a portion of Psalm 106. Hallelujah. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Who can declare the Lord's mighty acts or proclaim all the praise to him? How happy are those who uphold justice and practice righteousness at all times. Remember me, Lord, when you show favor to your people. Come to me with your salvation so that I may enjoy the prosperity of your chosen ones, rejoice in the joy of your nation, and boast about your heritage. Today's message from the prophet Isaiah is going to be a message of woe to the rebellious people of Jerusalem. Woe to Ariel, Ariel, the city where David camped. Continue year after year. Let the festivals recur. I will oppress Ariel. And there will be mourning and crying, and she will be to me like an Ariel. I will camp in a circle around you. I will besiege you with earth ramps that will set up my siege towers against you. You will be brought down. You will speak from the ground, and your words will come from low in the dust. Your voice will be like that of, of a spirit from the ground. Your speech will whisper from the dust. Your many foes will be like fine dust, and many of the ruthless like blowing chaff. Then, suddenly, in an instant, you will be punished by the Lord of armies with thunder, earthquake and loud noise, storm, tempest, and a flame of consuming fire. All the many nations going out to battle against Ariel, all the attackers, the siege works against her, and those who oppress her, will then be like a dream, a vision in the night. It will be like a hungry one who dreams he is eating, then wakes and is still hungry, and like a thirsty one who dreams he is drinking, then wakes and is still thirsty, longing for water. So it will be for all the many nations who go to battle against Mount Zion. Stop and be astonished. Blind yourselves and be blind. They are drunk, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with beer. For the Lord has poured out on you an overwhelming urge to sleep. He has shut your eyes, the prophets, and covered your heads, the seers. For you, the entire vision will be like the words of a sealed document. If it is given to one who can read and he is asked to read it, he will say, I can't read it because it is sealed. And if the document is given to one who cannot read and he is asked to read it, he will say, I can't read. The Lord said, these people approach me with their speeches to honor me with lip service. Yet their hearts are far from me and human rules direct their worship of me. Therefore, I will confound again these people with wonder after wonder. The wisdom of their wise will vanish, and the perception of their perceptive will be hidden. Today, we're going to read the short letter written by Jude, who identifies himself as a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James. James, was, James called himself the brother of Jesus, and so it may very well be that Jude is another uh, half-brother of Jesus, a, another one of those um, relatives of Jesus that may have been a uh, son of Joseph and Mary after Mary gave birth to Jesus. But however Jude may have been related to our Savior, Jude had a very great love for his Savior and for the Lord's teaching. And in his letter, he warns us and all of his readers against those who will come with false teachings. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James, to those who are called, loved by God the Father and kept for Jesus Christ, may mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Dear friends, although I was eager to write you about the salvation we share, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was delivered to the saints once for all. For some people who were designated for this judgment long ago have come in by stealth. They are ungodly, turning the grace of our God into sensuality 
and denying Jesus Christ, our only Master and Lord. Now, I want to remind you, although you came to know all these things once and for all, that Jesus saved a people out of Egypt and later destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their own position, but abandoned their proper dwelling. He has kept in eternal chains in deep darkness for the judgment on the great day. Likewise, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns committed sexual immorality and perversions and serve as an example by undergoing the punishment of eternal fire. In the same way, these people, relying on their dreams, defile their flesh, reject authority, and slander glorious ones. Yet when Michael the archangel was disputing with the devil in an argument about Moses' body, he did not dare utter a slanderous condemnation against him, but said, the Lord rebuke you. But these people blaspheme anything they do not understand. And what they do understand by instinct, like irrational animals, by these things they are destroyed. Woe to them, for they have gone the way of Cain, have plunged into Balaam's error for profit, and have perished in Korah's rebellion. These people are dangerous reefs at your love feasts, as they eat with you without reverence. They are shepherds who only look after themselves. They are waterless clouds carried along by winds, trees in late autumn, fruitless, twice dead, and uprooted. They are wild waves of the sea, foaming up their shameful deeds, wandering stars for whom the blackness of darkness is reserved forever. It was about these that Enoch, in the seventh generation from Adam, prophesied, Look, the Lord comes with tens of thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment on all, and to convict all the ungodly concerning all the ungodly acts that they have done in an ungodly way, and concerning all the harsh things ungodly sinners have said against him. These people are discontented grumblers, living according to their desires. Their mouths utter arrogant words, flattering people for their own advantage. But you, dear friends, remember what was predicted by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. They told you, in the end time, there will be scoffers living according to their own ungodly desires. These people create divisions and are worldly, not having the spirit. But you, dear friends, as you build yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, Keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting expectantly for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ for eternal life. Have mercy on those who waver. Save others by snatching them from the fire. Have mercy on others, but with fear, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to protect you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory without blemish and with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time, now and forever. Amen. The word justification talks about our Lord declaring us not guilty of all of our sins for Jesus' sake. In our writing for today from the pen of Martin Chemnitz, we learn more about the, the uh, goals and effects of this verdict of not guilty that God has declared upon us for Jesus' sake. The doctrine of the goals and effects of justification is clear and easy, but it is us, but it is useful and necessary to repeat it at this point in our study of justification for several important reasons. That justification is received by faith should serve as a constant warning regarding the end or goal of the doctrine of justification so that we do not misuse this teaching in order to cultivate or confirm licentiousness, as the epistle of Jude admonishes us in verse 4. Transposing or transferring or perverting the grace of God into licentiousness. Two, just as we have a uniting of causes and effects in nature, so when we have the causes for our justification, we should have no doubt concerning the effects, namely salvation and eternal life. Three, that believers might know how to perform good works, and so that they will not seek a pretext to avoid doing them. Scripture says that renewal is an effect or result of justification. Four, Christ says in Matthew chapter 7, verses 16 through 20, that we are to judge a tree by its fruits. 
Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5 says, examine yourselves to see whether you are holding to your faith. Also look at 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10, make your calling sure. We judge the cause by the effects. Number five, this distinction between causes and effects is also useful for showing that sanctification or renewal is to be distinguished from justification and that the new obedience is not a cause or an essential part of our justification, but it is an effect or a result. Six, by means of this distinction, we can also answer the difficult question. When the believing heart in its trials feels no peace, joy, or happiness, is faith at that time, when it lays hold on Christ in the promise and tries to sustain itself with comfort, able to determine that it has the true righteousness unto eternal life? There, there is a difference between the causes or the forms of our righteousness before God and its effects. When the form or formal cause of our righteousness has been established, as described above, then faith ought to be assured of the acceptance of our person before God, unless it wants to make him a liar. Indeed, the effects show the cause, and when the effects cease, then we may conclude that the cause did not actually exist either. In the case of our justification, which is the full and perfect acceptance of the believer unto eternal life, certain effects in our life, such as the new obedience, follow rather slowly because of the weakness of our flesh. Some effects follow the way scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, we walk by faith and not by sight. Likewise, Romans chapter 4, verse 18, in hope he believed against hope. Or Colossians chapter 3, verse 3, our life is hidden with Christ in God. And Psalm 31, verse 19, you have laid up good things for those who fear you. Our hymn for today is uh, a stanza from the hymn, Preserve Your Word, O Savior. Preserve your word, O Savior, to us this latter day, and let your kingdom flourish. Enlarge your church, we pray. O oh, keep our faith from failing. Keep hope's bright star aglow. Let nothing from truth turn us while living here below. And we pray. Almighty God, we implore you, show your mercy to your humble servants, that we who put no trust in our own merits may not be dealt with after the severity of your judgment, but according to your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you all so much for spending this time in God's word with me today. May the Lord richly bless your day, and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.